So we have some three hole components, some fairly short ones, including our, we've got our socket for our chip. Again, it has a dimple in it, so we can match that up with a the dimple there. But we also have a crystal that goes in. And I think I'm going to put that in first because that goes in inside this uh, chip socket. And it's just going to be easier for holding that in place, I think, without having the chip socket in place. So here we go, we have a 12 meg, uh, 12 megahertz crystal. And again, it says 12M. And because of the, the two capacitors either side, that also tells you that that's a crystal. So I'm just holding this with my finger underneath. And because I don't have 57 fingers, I'm just going to use a bit of flux and then bring the, the solder to it just on one lead. Again, with a lot of these components, especially through hole components, solder up just one lead, first of all. And then once the solder is solidified, you can then double check. Is it in the right place? Is it the right component? And it's a lot easier to make a correction if you've only got one lead soldered up. But that's okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solder up the second one and then just reflow that one with a bit of fresh solder just to make sure. And crop those leads short. And let's get our chip socket in place. Again, we shall do the same trick, holding it in place. We shall put a wee drop of flux on. And then solder just one pin. It only needs a little bit of solder just to hold it in place. And then we can make sure that that's okay. And then we can do one more lead. We've got the notch in the right place. So that's okay, we can go on ahead and solder this up completely. Now because there's no chip actually in this socket at the moment, we can go along and just solder each pin in turn. There's no worry of too much heat building up. Obviously, if you're very slow at doing this, you will build up enough heat to slightly melt the chip socket. But you would have to be going fairly slow in order to do that. that in place. So we keep on working our way up in physical size of these components. And I think the next one up, or the next tallest component, is our little socket for bringing power in. That's this little device here. Actually one of the pins is slightly bent just try and straighten that. That fits in there. So it has two tabs that come up through uh, little slots there. They only just protrude. They're what I'm going to solder in first. Well, not strictly necessary, I am actually going to put 
a little drop of flux around these just to make it flow that bit better. And on these ones I'm leaving the iron on a lot longer than a normal component because this is actually heating up the case, it's soldering to the case of this connector. These five pins are a bit fiddly because they're very close together. I'm going to do this middle one first. Out of those three, just to make get the hard one done out the way first. inspect make sure that there's no little tiny bridges this is especially important because you know somebody might plug this into their computer and if we've bridged out some of those pins well that wouldn't be good but they're all okay so onwards and upwards We've got our little header. I don't think this strictly should be necessary. This should be programmed. But as it's part of the kit and it's there, I'll put it on. Now, this, as it calls it, LED underscore S, I'm guessing is this infrared LED receiver. There's nowhere else with a silk screen that looks like it on the rest of the board, so we shall install it looking as close to pos as possible as the legend on the silk screen says I'm just letting this cool down between each joint because these can be temperature sensitive A wisp of solder. So we'll move on to putting these little LEDs around the end. And I thought these were going to be color changing, as they were slightly different looking than the ones in the the big pack of LEDs for the main display. But they're not. They're just plain. There we go. So we've got our LED. Long lead is the positive. And hopefully they've given us a positive indication on the board. Now fortunately, these are tall enough that I can press down on the board and it seats them fully home. But if some of the other components were a bit taller, I would have to use the same trick of put my finger on from underneath while I soldered it. So again, because these are being soldered right up against the circuit board, I'm letting it cool while I just check that it's positioned okay. And then I can do the other. And 
and not staying on any more than it really is necessary. It's not the end of the world if you get these in the wrong way around. It is fixable, it's not it's not irrecoverable. And now we're on to our little tactile switch, which goes into here, I think. So this has got a slight snap fitting. Hopefully you don't snap it while you're trying to fit it. As you can see, the holes in the circuit board don't fully line up. Do you see that these pins are being splayed out? So that's a slight poor design. They should have made either bigger, slightly bigger holes or got the position of them a bit more accurate. But again, uh, we solder up the uh, pins, these sprung pins that are actually part of the casing. We do that first and then we'll solder the actual switch contacts. And just letting the heat soak into that a wee bit longer than you would with a normal solder joint and also using a bit extra solder. Just adds a bit of mechanical strength whenever it's getting pressed and jabbed at. That's that in, in place. And then the final component, I think, for this board is this switch here. Again, we've got part of the case of the switch comes through and gets soldered. That gives it the mechanical strength so that whenever we're jabbing at it later on to turn the thing on or turn it off, instead of the switch contacts taking that uh, pressure, it's transferred directly through to the uh, case uh, of the switch and the circuit board itself then. Again, it takes longer as there's more of a, a mass of metal to heat up, but it's worth just lingering that a little bit long, longer just to let that really get a good mechanical grip. And there we have it. Our circuit board is pretty much complete. You've got power switch, uh, selector switch, probably for the different modes. And the only thing left to do is to put our little circuit into it. So despite coming on a piece of carrier material, I've still got some bent leads. So again, we see on the, the package we've got our little cutaway, and if I angle this up, you can see we've got a cutaway on the silk screen, showing us where pin one is. Now something you find with these integrated circuits is when you get them, the legs splay out. So. You see though on this side, some have been bent in a little bit, but on this side, they're splayed too far out. 
there are tools for correcting this and they can work very well or you can just gently roll the chip on a hard surface just to, to bend those leads back into where they should be to get in to the socket. It takes usually a couple of attempts to get it to the right amount. Still need to go a bit more. Of course you must be careful to observe all static precautions, anti-static precautions. But seeing as they delivered this with no anti-static precautions really at all, I'm guessing it's not so important on this particular chip. So you hear that cracking noises? That's me trying to get those pins just bent enough in, but not overly bent, so that they fit in. So before you push it home, because they can be easily broken, trying to get them out, if you've got them in the wrong way around, you just go around and have a little look, make sure that all of the pins are going in. those have and this side just needs a little bit of an encouragement to go home. Oh. You really feel like you're gonna break it. Well, that seems to have got her. Pushed in okay. So that is this part complete. Next we'll be trying to figure out how we build our column of LEDs. So I might have to do a bit of searching on the old interwebs and see if I can find some instructions. If not, we'll just have to muddle through. <laughs>